Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Win Phil Zoo, our franchise mode zoo project that we have going on currently. And if you missed it, in our last stream that was a couple weeks ago, we got this bison slash pronghorn habitat done. And so far, to be fair, I haven't let it play very long, but so far, the little pronghorns are much happier in this enclosure. It's much bigger and we have these little fences here to kind of blockade some of the viewing from the guests. So if you're here, they can kind of hide behind here. They can also get far enough away from the guests that so far, fingers crossed, so far so good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what we did on stream last time. And I have to say our little habitat, our little hoofstock habitat area rather, is coming out pretty good. We've got our reindeer here, our follow deer here, ibex here, bison pronghorn here. And then we have one more space here for I'm thinking either moose or doll sheep. Now, I'm gonna let you guys decide on that one. So vote down below in the comments, doll sheep or moose will go in this area here. But that is not what I wanna focus on today. I wanna focus on expanding over this way and adding our first uh, cat species. Now, it's not gonna be a surprise, I know, because I'm gonna put it all over the thumbnail. You already know what we're adding. It's gonna be the snow leopard. Uh, but I wanna go ahead and add the snow leopard off on this direction over here. And I kinda wanna come down on either side here, make another circle, but also make this kind of an entrance area to more of like a nature-y walk. Um, I mean, I guess the whole thing is really going to be kind of nature-y, alpine-y. That's kind of the vibe. But anyway, I want it to go down in elevation a bit. So if you're looking at it this way, I want the snow leopard habitat to be going up in elevation this way. So when you're walking, you're kind of going down, down, down a hill because I have a little plan for a waterfall right here. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I want to focus on today. So that's what we'll do in the time lapse. Um, I also, I'm hoping that when we get more animals, this will be less congested. So it may be the wrong decision, but for now, I am going to ignore this. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about this. So let's go ahead and bring back our UI here. We have a couple things to check on. It looks like we have a present. What did we do? Ooh, guest numbers. Perfect. Claim rewards there. That is awesome. Uh, oh, underpriced. That's not a bad complaint to have. And then mechanic research. I think they're still, yeah, the Europe theme uh, still going on that. So let's raise our prices just a bit. What do we think? 12 and 12? I think, because since it doesn't really make a difference between adult and child price, let's, let's see if they're happy about that. And we'll get rid of that little notification. Let me let it play. Let's just go ahead and take a, a quick little check on our animals to make sure. Oh, hello, buddy. We're walking on top of uh, on top of the grasses. Beautiful. So yeah, your welfare is 97%, which is awesome. 96%, 96, great. 94, 94. Yeah, these guys are all doing great. Now, there's not too many people over here, but the other thing that I want to take care of before we actually jump into our time lapse is, of course, something I always forget. We need to put some donation boxes along here. So it looks like you guys are stopping there, stopping over here, which is good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do apologize um, for those of you that have been following the channel and know I, the start of 2022, 2022, did I say that right? The start of 2022, man, hit me hard. I got so sick right after Christmas, which lingered into uh, the new year. And then I got better for about a week-ish. And then I was hit with another sickness, um, none of which is COVID. So I guess that's good if you want to see it that way. Um, but the working theory, I guess, is they think that I had walking pneumonia and then also a very bad sinus infection. So my whole point in telling you that is that if you hear me clearing my throat, I 
I apologize. I'm gonna try really hard not to do that the entire video, um, but I'm still, I still have like lingering cough symptoms, lingering um, sore throat a little bit. I'm telling you, I have never been so sick for so long and it's so frustrating when I have so many plans, so many things I wanna get done and having that kind of hinder my ability to do so. So anyway, just while we're putting down these education uh, little thingies here, wanted to, to let you know that I know it's not the best to listen to. I'm gonna try my very hardest, but I apologize if I do clear my throat uh, a bit during this video. So there we go, we've got that education, that education. Um, why don't we, can we just slide this over? and do two more, I guess, over here. The fact that it's a mixed habitat, I just wanna make sure everything is covered. Are those floating? No, they're not floating, fabulous. Uh, pronghorn, pronghorn antelope, perfect. I can say that, right? Awesome, so we've got some education and now some donation bins. More people are coming over. You, sir, are going to stress the heck out taking a nap there, why? Why, when you have shelter and all these sleeping areas back there, would you decide to sleep right there? It's, they like, they ask for it, I swear. We give them all the opportunity, but they say, no, we're gonna do it anyway and moan and complain the whole time. Uh, I guess apparently same thing with the reindeer. What the heck is going on with them? I guess just because there's so many. Yeah, stress, there's so many people. So maybe we need to utilize a little bit of this situation as well um, and kind of grab this little fence. Let's duplicate it, get it out of the group and bring it over here and see if we can't give them a little, whoa, where did it go? Hello, I definitely duplicated you. Duplicate, yes, thank you. Get out of that, okay, there we go, perfect. Let's put this maybe somewhere like right, right here. I know that that really blocks off the shelter, but that's kind of the point, right? If we go over here and see, yeah, it's kind of the point is to give them somewhere, oh, hello, give them somewhere to hide. Is that really not all in one group? Why not? That's really annoying. That's incredibly annoying. You were part of a group before. Huh. Oh well. well, we'll just select all this. I wanted a little bit higher. That was the only point in trying to select all this. So we'll go all the way to the end. Almost there. Beautiful. Add you in a group. Now I can raise you all together. We'll go a little bit higher like that. Beautiful. And let's see if that helps at all. So your stress is great. Yours is great. Yours is great. Okay. Well, Perfect, that seemed to help. And you know what? Maybe we can do one more like over here and we can make that kind of a back private area for them as well. There we go. Yeah, so that little area, the little scratching post over there is a little bit of a private area. There we go. So now, I mean, you can see them if they're sleeping in this shelter. You can see them if they kind of come over here. You can see them when they eat or play with their little foragey thing, but at least they have an area to get away. Um, it also looks like this is moving a bit of traffic away as well, so hopefully that helps too. I actually really like this little corner. I know it's a bit of a random thing, but this little planter right here in the corner, I like it. I need a little edging fence or decoration there, um, but I do like that. So, let's see. Oh, goodness. Why did I, why did we have to pick such, um, needy animals? So, animal is thirsty. Is this not... Full, yeah, so keeper urgently assigned, please. We should, you know what? Ugh, is it that time? So, actually, oh, you know what is the problem? Is that our little building's over here, but we don't have any, uh, that's not the right tab. We don't have any keeper's huts over here. So staff facilities, so they're having to like run back and forth. That is 100% the problem. Can we fit? I don't think so. Can we fit that there? Oh, you know what? Okay. I mean, I'm not super mad at that. Maybe we can integrate it into the building somehow, but it would be better. It would be better if it would fit like that, which I'm pretty sure we can do. 
We're just going to need to make everything upset for a minute and delete the path in order to do so. So let's go to the paths. Let's delete this so that we can get that because I kind of want a, a big one there, right? Because it's all the hoofstock are all in this center area. And so I want to make sure that we have enough to be able to take care of all of those animals. So if we kind of line this up and that way I'm thinking we just extend this building out a little bit and let's move this over to there. Okay, beautiful. And let's see, we should, we should be able to sneak the path right here. So we'll place that there. And then I think that's all we're gonna need. Well, we'll do that for now. Let's grab the, the path, make it not so fat. Uh, let's, hello, come around. Sure, connect there. It doesn't matter if it's pretty because this is gonna be hidden inside the building anyway. So I don't really care if it is ugly. So there we go, we are all connected. Beautiful. That, that should help because we do have enough keepers, I believe. If we go to staff, yeah, we have one, two, three, four keepers. All of them are overworked. How many habitats do we have? One, two, three, four, five, technically. So I think two more keepers is warranted. We're doing very well on money, so I'm not gonna be quite as conservative as I was when we were doing Tully Zoo, because of course we are a little bit ahead of the game in that all of our research is done and all that kind of stuff. So we were able to put down more and blah, blah, blah. It's our second zoo, a little bit easier of a time. So we'll put those two down. Um, did the keeper come over to this habitat yet or no? Are they on their way? It might've been one of the ones that I just put down. I just want to make sure that this, oh man, we got a fine. How awful. Let's see. Yeah. So keeper assigned, keeper urgently assigned. Please get your butt over here. And then what else is the problem? Uh, low welfare, why? Really? Good lord. How? I mean, come on. This is a little bit ridiculous. And what the heck kind of name is that for our Alpine Ibex? I, I didn't even notice this. Let's get rid of all these numbers there, buddy. How about that? There we go. We'll just give you a, a somewhat-ish normal name. So the keeper's there has attracted protesters just because you're stressed. You're behind the wall. Why are we so stressed? Maybe we need to raise these a little bit. Is that why? Let's see. Raise those up. Raise this up like that. Perfect. Oh, and you know what? Uh, facilities. Let's try these stupid little signs, which never seem to work at least when I have tried them but where where are those little signs guest facilities are they the little be quiet don't make lots of noise signs you guys know what I'm talking about you're probably telling me exactly where they are too um, but I cannot for the life of me remember where they are they are facilities, aren't they? I was pretty sure they were under the signage thing. Um, one more minute and then I will pause it and figure it out so you guys don't have to suffer with me. Um, wow, I was pretty sure that they were in. Aha, there they are. Perfect. So let's go ahead and sink these down for all you quiet, naughty people. Maybe potentially this will help. I know people have said about the, um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, what are they called? The speakers with like ambient noise and stuff like that. I've never had success with those. Um, I guess we could try them, but I feel like these signs should work. I know they offer security as well. So let's just go ahead and throw these down. I just hate how they look, which is why I'm sinking them all into the ground. So they still have their effect, uh, but we don't have to look at them is my only thing because I think they're I think they're kind of ugly. So we're gonna sink these all just under the ground, out of sight, out of mind. The reindeer are the only ones, I guess, not having a bad time now that we put those walls in. 
I kind of swore that the pronghorn and the bison were going to be fine because the habitat was deep enough so that they uh, could get far enough away. Let's see. Did that help at all? There's just so many people. Oh my lord. Maybe we should make our zoo like super expensive so nobody shows up. <laughs> we should make a zoo and, and just not invite people, right? Are you any better? Uh, no, you're not any better. How about you go hide? You should go hide. What if we take one of these and put it, like, literally right in front? So, like, you cannot view right here. Like this. Yeah, you cannot view right there. Does that help at all? Are you guys, are you guys doing okay? I've had 12 animals have attracted protesters. I can't. I'm about ready to just, like, scrap it and put five different animals in these enclosures because this is, this is a little ridiculous. Yeah, animal welfare, animals stressed, low welfare for the follow deer. Uh, oh, this one's due to space. Okay, so these guys aren't actually stressed. We just have a ton of them. So let's go. That I can fix. That is an okay problem. I am okay with handling. So let's go follow deer. We have our alpha here who's very old. Uh, wow, we have a whole bunch of females. So let's keep, these are clearly the adults. You guys I want to keep and you I want to keep, but you guys are all juveniles. Oh, but I want you to grow up before I put you in storage. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe... Maybe we turn contraceptives on for these guys and we put, we release you guys into the wild or quick trade, quick trade you guys out. So then that hopefully, does that help with the space or are you just like stuck? Can you move over here? Are you stuck on the rock? Yeah, oh, okay, well, he might have just been stuck. Because, yeah, his space is all good now. Let's see, can't find accessible staff room. Oh, did I not put a staff room? I swear, isn't there one in here? Let me see. Uh, yeah, but they might want another one. Picky, picky, picky. Picky, picky, picky. Um, let's see... Where do I want to squeeze one in? Let's see if we can't squeeze one right here somewhere? Question mark? Maybe we'll put one right here because we'll do another building behind this, behind that habitat. So if we go to staff facilities and go to staff room, we'll put another large one. Or not another large one. We'll put a large one kind of lined up right here. And then... And then that can just be another, like, behind the scenes. It'll be, like, backstage for this habitat, right? We'll, we'll encase it in a building and everything. So hopefully that should solve that. Now, back to welfare problems. I did want to do a time lapse today. Uh, so we have got to get going on that. Um, attracted protesters, what's your problem? Nutrition. Hydration. I don't think... The keepers uh, can reach this for whatever reason. So let's see if we duplicate this and put it like back, maybe right, maybe right here instead. Will they be able to reach that? Oh, that was beautiful. That's not what I wanted. Can you come above the rock? Thank you. Perfect. No, I don't like that at all. Let's see, what can we do? If we switch and put this feeder over here, like that, and then we put this, we'll just take these rocks that are around it, as well as the feeder itself, or the water thing, excuse me. We'll take that and we'll put this one over here, like this like that like that and then if we get out of here and select this rock and lower it down a little bit so it makes it look like it's not you know 
not like they have to stand on a cliff to drink and then maybe delete that rock. There we go. I know it's floating a little bit, but they hopefully should be able to reach that now. Let's fix this that we broke. That over there. Perfect. And then I guess we can just delete these and leave that as a rock. So hopefully, oh, excuse me, goodness gracious, my nose is so stuffy. <laughs> I'm so over my nose being stuffy. Okay, um, let's go ahead and hit play. Yes, come in, fill this, please fill it. Yes, thank you. Now, hold on, pause. And I wanna see your traversable area, staff traversable area. Okay, so you could technically reach over there. I don't know what the issue was before, but hopefully that's fixed now. Maybe the animals couldn't reach it for some reason. But you should. Let's go. Let's go drink. It's right there. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that should fix their problem. Let's see what else. Multiple habitats, animal welfare. Okay, you know what? Get rid of all that. You guys should be happy. Are you guys happy now? Yes, you just need a higher meal quality. Did we research that enough? Let me see. Where is the habitat entrance for this? Can I please have this door right here? Thank you. And no, we have not researched it enough. So we can't change that yet, but that's okay. How are you guys doing? You guys are doing okay? Okay, so those are two animals. Okay. You guys are, that's not an animal. You guys are okay now, fabulous. How are you guys doing? Looks like you're still a bit panicky. What a shocker, still panicky. How about we just put you in like a concrete box? Would that make it easier for you? My goodness. So the bison are a bit stressy too. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, you know what, what we might be able to do, we might, instead of having this all viewing area, maybe we can, we can break it up with the rocks. So if we just take this very quickly, I'm going to do this super quickly just to kind of demonstrate the idea that I have. But if we do like this kind of thing, and then that way they can't. They can't view right here. They can only view here and here. Let me see if that just makes any difference at all. Let's see if that makes any difference at all. Let's see, is their social going up? If you guys would stop yelling, maybe they wouldn't be so stressed, but the protesters are actually adding to the problem because they're over here screaming at the animals when they're stressed. But I also feel like this is this is a bit picky. I don't feel like these guys would be stressed in a habitat like this. Like they have plenty of room to get away. So it is okay, it is working ish, right? It's going up. You guys are okay. Yeah, the bison are okay now. You're okay now. Okay. You're okay now. Thank you. Now let's just see. Nobody's looking over there. You guys are going to gather over here. Oh, we had a baby. Look at that. How cute. A little boy with a little bronze medal. Baby, baby. <laughs> I love the animals. The little baby animals. Okay, well, that seems to have worked. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to worry about it in this episode, but that seems like a temporary fix. So we'll kind of clean this up a little bit later. Don't let me forget. Um, okay, let's, before I run out of time, let's go ahead and get started on our, I'm going to get rid of this because they are fine now. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We'll pause it. No more issues coming up. We have a nice clean little alert system, uh, alert area over there. No major problems. Let's get started. Let's get started on the time lapse. 
time, wow, excuse me, let's get started on the time lapse. <laughs> let's get our snow leopards in. So very happy with how this one comes out, but we do not get this entirely finished uh, because despite, I mean, I guess I do know better. But anyway, scaling in Planet Zoo is a bit difficult. And with our hoofstock area, a couple of the habitats had come out a little bit smaller than I really kind of wanted them to be, which caused us a couple issues. Um, so with this one, I was determined not to make it too small and I ended up making it massive like especially once we put the actual snow leopard in it looks like a tiny house cat in like this massive massive enclosure but overall I am really happy with how this comes out uh, I definitely like the kind of sloped gradient that I picked uh, to kind of make it so it's not so flat uh, so there's a little bit of height elevation in this zoo I think that that is great uh, but what I end up deciding and I actually decided this pretty much when I was happy halfway done with it, uh, realizing that it was going to be rather large, is I actually want to split this in half. So the habitat that we're working on on this side is going to be for the snow leopards, but on the other side, I want your guys' opinion again. I know I'm asking for a lot of opinions in this episode, but I want your opinion again because I either want to do like a Siberian tiger, uh, maybe Bengal tiger, or Jaguar, I think. Those are the three that I'm kind of ping-ponging back and forth between, trying to decide really what would fit Winfill Zoo best. And I think I'm leaning toward the Siberian Tiger just because of their uh, the colder climate cats, right? So if we do jaguars, they're kind of tropical and, and Bengal tigers are as well. Um, so I'm kind of leaning more towards the Siberian tiger just because I think it's a good match with the snow leopard. But if you guys have a different idea of one of those cats or altogether a different cat that we can consider, because I honestly, I didn't even consider the cougar. Um, that one could work really well. Mountain lions um, in this kind of mountainy taiga kind of zone, um, I think fit too. So, so yeah, anyway, my whole point is just let me know, let me know what you think down below <laughs> and we will decide, uh, that will be the next episode is we'll go ahead and put those guys in the other side and kind of finish up this habitat. But as always, um, actually I shouldn't say as always, normally with franchise zoos, I normally just kind of build and don't really use a reference picture, um, but I definitely did use a reference picture for this one today. I was totally, totally at a creative block and I just could not think of even the simplest uh, big cat habitat. And uh, so I ended up going on Google and finding a really cool um, concept art, uh, like a above shot of the uh, of the habitat, whatever it was. I think it was actually for a snow leopard. Um, and that's where I got the idea for this waterfall area and the kind of river going through is because in that concept art, that's kind of what they had. And so in order to get the waterfall, I needed to have some sort of height elevation change, right? And so that's kind of what sparked that. Um, oh, I totally forgot I put an education board down and we didn't even assign it to the snow leopard. Uh, hints and tips for next time. Uh, things to remember, I guess. Uh, but anyway, this habitat, pretty much what we get done uh, is all the rock work. Actually, I shouldn't even say all the rock work because I 100% plan to add more rocks to this habitat, uh, despite the fact that it is a lot of rocks as it is right now. But I wanted to be mindful because we just had the headache with the hoofstock being so picky about uh, people getting too close and, you know, people being loud and them getting stressed out. And I know, I know the snow leopards are that way too. Um, so I I really am I'm stressing about the fact that they're probably gonna freak out once we put them in this habitat uh, we don't actually have them in there long enough for me to test and see if anything bad happens because we kind of just throw them in the habitat at the end of the episode um, and that's that because we've we run out of time but I'm really hoping that the way that I designed this habitat will work in franchise. So you can see there I'm using the one-way glass panels and we're going to make a little cave right here. So this will be the cave that the snow leopards can go in for their hard shelter. But it also is a cave that the guests can go in on the other side and view them from this glass viewing area. So I'm hoping that that will help not stress them out, right? Because it's one-way glass, they won't be able to see the guests. But then two, there's only 
three other viewing points, one of which I really don't think the guests are going to use because there's that viewing point right above the waterfall, but then there's two more as you come down the hill. And I really think they're only going to use the two that come down the hill. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I mean, that's what I said before we looked at the hoofstock and then they all freaked out and went wild. So hopefully this time the snow leopards will be okay with the way that I've built this habitat. That's what but that's what we're hoping for. But basically we're just putting a whole ton of rocks around to make this little cave. Don't worry too much about the fact that it looks ugly on top. To be honest, a lot of things in either theme parks or zoos look kind of ugly on the surface uh, or the roof rather, because you don't really see it. You only see it from aerial shots. When you're walking around the park, the, the walls and stuff is all that you see. So that's really all I was concerned with. I'm not quite done on this yet. Um, I want to do a little bit more detailing around the sides and add some foliage around the outsides as well um, but overall very happy with how it came out as far as like doing the kind of inside outside cave thing where part of it's in the habitat part of it's not I feel like it really makes the guests feel like they can get inside the habitat with the snow leopards uh, and get kind of an up close look at them so again hopefully fingers crossed the snow leopards don't freak out about it but using some just very general uh, big cat fencing here. I've used this a ton of times over and over again, where it just kind of goes up and then slants inwards, you know, would make it so they can't climb out, stuff like that. There might even be some hot wire on top, who knows? Um, and then this is a little bridge. This is, I think the last kind of thing that I work on is a little bridge so that the snow leopards and the keepers, hopefully, can get from one side of the habitat to the other. Um, but yeah, so we are going to wrap up here in in just another second throw our little snow leopard in and uh, and take a look at her so hopefully you guys enjoyed this time lapse let's get back to real time all right so that took me a little longer than I thought it would <laughs> this is the enclosure that we are left with I didn't want this episode to be like a whole hour long so what we are going to do is we're actually going to just temporarily just put some barriers up here so that we can actually get our little snow leopards in. And what I decided, which I probably already talked about, but I'm going to talk about it again anyway, is that I want to split this habitat uh, in half, basically, so that we can have either uh jaguars or tigers maybe siberian tigers on the other side uh thinking that they might fit in with our zoo really well let me just move this so that we can make that a uh what's it called like a brick wall there we go perfect uh but yeah we want to split this in half so that we can have another type of big cat i think would work really really well um and that way our snow leopards don't have this like massive giant area to run around in. it's a little bit more feasible for them but uh we also get to add a whole nother species which is pretty cool so that's what I wanted to avoid. Why are you in the ground? Can you not be in the ground? That would be great. I just want to very quickly put these down so that our big cats cannot escape. Let's move this over closer to here. Thank you. Get a null barrier so they can still see in. I don't think they can escape that. I don't think in the game they can escape that, but in real life they would totally squeeze right through that. So we'll go ahead and run this null barrier all the way around to the top of here this over waterfall viewing area is my favorite part of the habitat by far by far my favorite part of the habitat okay well that makes the habitat look uh very ugly <laughs> but at least hopefully we can get our little cats in there so let's go ahead and uh hook up the very temporary again temporary being keyword for everything in this habitat here. So yeah, so then our little snow leopards can run around in there. We have a little cave viewing area, which I think turned out really, really cool. Um, put some lights in here in a later stage, I think, because that would more simulate like why this would be one way glass if it's kind of lit up in here and kind of dark in here, lets you see, lets you see in there without seeing back in here. So that came out pretty cool. So let's take a look. Animal trade let's go for snow excuse me snow leopard and see what we've got please don't be expensive 
Not bad. Uh, why are you all females? Can we have a pair of females? I mean, I do know one male, one female group size. So we can have one female and she'll be just happy. So, uh, or just fine rather. So why don't we take you then? Let's go ahead and adopt you and send you to the zoo. Let's go ahead and get you in there. Get you all situated. Cause I didn't want to end the episode without actually getting one of our smell leopards in. And I want to test this, the traversable area from either side, because I made this little bridge hoping that they could run across it. So here we go. Let's see. Yeah. Look how tiny she looks in this, but I mean, it's a good size, right? She's got a lot of space to kind of run around. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Yes. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. She can even get to this water, which is great. I might adjust this a little bit more because I did want her to be able to get down into that water too. Um, but that's not the end of the world. Can you, oh, I didn't even check. Can you get inside there? You can, beautiful. So let's see what you need. Uh, you have way too much soil and you just need more. We're gonna go with more rock um, and maybe some snow here or there. Uh, because I don't like the idea of those outside coolers. They just are super unrealistic to me. Um, but there we go. We can give her a bunch of rock for now and we'll do a, a bit more, um, finessing with the terrain paint in the next episode. But see, even this, oh, I guess it's not that huge. She has 918 square meters. Yeah, I guess it's not that massive, uh, of a space. But yeah, it gives her a little bit to run around and my hope is that by only having these little viewing areas and then obviously this in here is that she won't get too stressed out. So I know that was a fairly quick, here's our beautiful uh, cat. Okay, goodbye. But I'm going to wrap up this episode because it's already pushing 30 minutes here and, uh, and I don't want it to be too long. So in the next episode, oh, she's going to go straight up the only tree she has. Look at her go. Where, wait, where'd she go? Hello? Is she inside the trunk? She what? Okay. Going back down. Alrighty, that for Planet Zoo animals that climb things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is what they normally do. They go up and they clip through things and and uh, uh, it doesn't always go right. But anyway, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and end it. So as I probably already mentioned in the time lapse, but I'm gonna mention it again real quick. This will be the other half. Uh, we will get this kind of finished and we'll start working on this half in, oh my goodness. Well. <laughs> That I didn't see coming. So let's go ahead and capture her and put her back in. Couldn't we just, oops, not cancel move. Go ahead and move you back into there. Couldn't we just end this on a note with no, no issues? Couldn't that just be a thing? Why couldn't that just be a thing? Raise this up. I guess I should have checked while I was checking traversable area. I probably should have checked the fact that uh, she could potentially have escaped that. So anyway, on that note, God, this episode has not gone how I anticipated it was going to go, but we have a snow leopard. So next time we will work on this. We will continue this one over here, get another animal, kind of start our little nature -y walk area. And, uh, and yeah, that's all I have for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and click that like button if you made it this far and are enjoying the video. It really does help me out. I greatly do appreciate it. And until next time, I will talk at you guys in the next episode. Bye!